The Zimbabwe national rugby union team, nicknamed the Sables, represents the African nation of Zimbabwe in international competition, and is administered by the Zimbabwe Rugby Union. While sides representing the colony of Rhodesia have played as early as 1910, the modern-day Zimbabwe rugby team did not play its first test until 1981, against Kenya. Zimbabwe has competed in two World Cups, in 1987 and 1991, in place of South Africa, who were sanctioned by the IRB at the time due to apartheid. Zimbabwe is categorized as Tier 3 Development 1, which prioritizes Zimbabwe over other nations due to historical success as well as popularity of rugby in the nation. During the colonial days, the team had an association with touring British Isles teams, who would regularly play matches against them in their tours of South Africa, the earliest tour being in 1910 when Zimbabwe was known as Southern Rhodesia. The side has also played New Zealand on several occasions, the first being in the late 1920s. Zimbabwe is the only non Tier 1 nation to defeat the All Blacks, as the Southern Rhodesia side defeated New Zealand in 1947. Zimbabwe currently compete in the Africa Gold Cup, considered the equivalent of the six nations in Africa. Zimbabwe have won the competition once, in 2012 Africa Cup, and finished runners up in 2013, 2014, and 2015. Excluding the Springboks, Zimbabwe is one of only three nations in Africa to qualify for the Rugby World Cup, the others being Namibia and the Ivory Coast. The Sables maintain fierce rivalries with regional neighbours Namibia and Kenya, as the respective three nations have vied for African supremacy since the 2000s. Topic. History Topic: Pre-internationals 1890 to 1910. When the Pioneer Column arrived in Rhodesia from the Cape Province in 1890, it brought with it the country's first rugby players. The oldest clubs in the country, Queens and the Bulawayo Athletic Club, were formed in 1894 in Bulawayo and the Rhodesia Rugby Football Union was founded one year later in 1895. The first tour by a Rhodesian team to South Africa took place in 1898, and was composed of players from the five biggest clubs in the two major settlements of Bulawayo and Salisbury, today known as Harare. Southern Rhodesia – Rhodesia era A British Lions team played a side called Southern Rhodesia on 30 July 1910 in Bulawayo, the British Isles team would defeat Southern Rhodesia. In 1924 a British side would play another match against Rhodesia, on 24 July in Salisbury, the British won 24–11. With this, this was the first formal national side to represent the country. On 14 July 1928, Rhodesia played in Bulawayo against New Zealand, losing 8–44. During their 1938 tour to South Africa, the British Lions played two matches against Rhodesia. The first, taking place on 20 July saw the British win 25–11, three days later the British won again, 45–11. These matches were played in Salisbury and Bulawayo. The 1949 Rhodesian rugby team, led by John Morkel, famously beat a touring All Blacks side led by Fred Allen in Bulawayo 10–8 on 27 July 1949. Three days later they drew with the mighty All Blacks in Salisbury 3–3. Allen had infamously told his team that, no matter the circumstance, the team would not complain about touring conditions, as he felt whinging would not change the result on the pitch. In spite of this pact, the team encountered a number of issues which were not voiced properly, including the traveling ship being too small, long travel routes, Maori players being left behind due to racial codes, issues with coaching and not acclimating properly to the heat and conditions. In 1960, New Zealand returned to play a match on 2 July at Glamis Park, with Rhodesia losing 14 29, though gave the All Blacks a scare yet again, with the game being tied 6 all by half time. The 1962 tour of South Africa by the British Lions had Rhodesia as the opening fixture on the tour. The opening game of the Lions tour saw the visitors win in Bulawayo, beating Rhodesia 38-9 on 26 May. The next tour, in 1962, the Lions won in Salisbury, beating the side 32-6. In 1973 Rhodesia played a one-off match against Italy, winning 42-4. 
In 1970, Rhodesia played New Zealand for the last time on 27 July, losing 14–27. Overall, Rhodesia had played New Zealand five times, winning once and drawing once. In 1974, the Lions were back at Salisbury where they defeated Rhodesia 42–6. An interesting note is that during the 1960s and 1970s, a number of players born in Rhodesia would go on to be capped for other international sides, such as Gary Teichman, David Curtis, and Bobby Skinstead. Rhodesia's rugby playing strength reached its peak in the early to mid-1970s seasons when the country possessed 49 clubs, putting together 102 teams. Record against Tier 1 nations prior to 1980. <laughs> Zimbabwe era present. Topic. 1980s and 1990s, the Golden Generation In 1980, the Rhodesia Rugby Football Union was renamed the Zimbabwe Rugby Union, reflecting the end of white minority rule in Zimbabwe, and the beginning of the new state. Previously, the Rhodesia side was exclusively all white, in contrast to the East Africa Tuskers which had been integrated. However, the new Zimbabwe side would instead be integrated, including both black and white players. A tour to England was undertaken that year playing six matches, the first against Surrey at Twickenham and one of the others being against Gloucestershire at Kingsholm on 1 October. That same year, the ZRU would sever all its ties to the South African Rugby Board due to mounting pressure to boycott the apartheid regime. While Zimbabwe would gain international acceptance was a rugby side, they would no longer have the benefit of having teams in the Curry Cup and other competitions. They played their first international game as Zimbabwe on 7 July 1981 against Kenya, winning 34-24. Throughout the 1980s, Zimbabwe would play a variety of opponents and enjoy a decent amount of success, defeating opponents such as Spain and the Soviet Union. In the victory over the Soviet Union, history was made as Richard Simba became the first black player for Zimbabwe. In 1987, Zimbabwe was invited to partake in the inaugural 1987 Rugby World Cup to represent the African continent, instead of South Africa, who were under sanction due to apartheid. Unfortunately, the Sables would lose all three of their matches, although came on the verge of upsetting Romania losing by one point, a game which featured a two-try performance by Richard Simba. The following year in 1988, Zimbabwe would become one of the charter members of Rugby Africa, alongside the Ivory Coast, Morocco and Tunisia. In 1990, Zimbabwe participated in the first Rugby World Cup qualifying competition for the African continent. The team topped a group consisting of the Ivory Coast, Morocco, and Tunisia, qualifying for the 1991 Rugby World Cup. However, unfortunately for the Sables, they would not have much luck, losing all their three matches to Ireland, Japan, and Scotland by fairly large margins. After this World Cup would mark the end of an era for Zimbabwe, as many players from Zimbabwe's golden generation would retire, the end of apartheid meant that South Africa would take the throne as the most dominant nation in African rugby, Namibia and later Kenya would enter the scene, challenging the original four charter members of Rugby Africa, and the slow deterioration of the Zimbabwean economy in the 1990s and into the 2000s would cause many rugby players both black and white to leave the country for opportunities elsewhere. An example of this is Kennedy Simba, who initially played as a Zimbabwe international, but would later defect to South Africa due to the political and economic situation. Zimbabwe finished last in the round robin for the 1995 Rugby World Cup, and would finish third in the 1999 qualifying round robin. Topic: 2000s decline. The Sables would begin the decade in poor form, having lost all four of their matches in the 2000 Africa Cup, against Namibia and a South African amateur 15. The team narrowly improved in the following edition in 2001, being able to defeat Namibia once by the score of 27-26. In the penultimate 2002 edition, Zimbabwe played a close and tense game against Namibia in Harare, but ultimately lost 30-42, failing to qualify for the 2003 Rugby World Cup. As the decade continued, Zimbabwe would slowly fade from the African rugby scene. The 2004 campaign was disastrous, as Zimbabwe lost to Madagascar for the first time, and would later get thrashed by Namibia. 
The 2007 Rugby World Cup qualifying campaign was also a disaster, with Zimbabwe losing to Zambia, an opponent they had traditionally dominated. By 2008, the Sables hit rock bottom, losing in the first round of the qualifying for the 2011 World Cup. Topic: 2010s revival. The 2010s would begin with hope for Zimbabwe. The Sables won the Africa Cup for the first time in 2010, beating Botswana and Madagascar. The following year, after a reform of the Africa Cup divisions, Zimbabwe were placed in Group 1B, alongside familiar foes the Ivory Coast and Madagascar and Uganda. Zimbabwe won the division, defeating both Madagascar and Uganda. As with many other sports, over the years, numerous talented young Zimbabwean rugby players have emigrated to play for other nations, mainly South Africa but also Australia, Scotland and other European countries. This trend has continued with players being attracted abroad by better playing and coaching facilities, as well as being pushed by the ever-declining economic climate in their country of origin. The exodus includes some big names, the likes of Ray Mort, Gary Teichman, Brian Mujithi, Adrian Garvey, Tendai Emtiawarira, Bobby Skinstead and Tondurai Chivanga all to South Africa, David Pocock and Kyle Godwin all to Australia, Don Armand to England, David Curtis to Ireland, Scott Gray, David Denton and Paul Johnston all to Scotland, Andy Marinos to Wales, Takudzwa Nguenya to USA, Sebastian Negri to Italy and Edmore Takayindessa and Marcel Coutsi all to Germany, to Name but a few. Many other Zimbabwe born players are playing at top levels in New Zealand, South Africa, Wales, England, Scotland, Ireland, and across Europe. Record Their record against all nations, updated to 15 August 2015, is as follows. Topic: World Cup record. Topic: Current squad. Players called up to Zimbabwe's 2018 Africa Gold Cup squad. Head coach: Peter De Villiers. Assistant coach: Brendan Dawson. Assistant coach: Stanley Raubenheimer. See also Zimbabwe Rugby Union Zimbabwe at the Rugby World Cup Zimbabwe National Rugby Sevens Team Africa Cup